Today we're doing integration. I'd like to look at integration as the inverse operation to differentiation. So let's take something like y is equal to, I don't know, 4x cubed minus 2x squared plus 3x minus 5 as an example. OK, that's the sort of thing that we were dealing with last week. And we differentiate that so we can get y prime. You, I hope everybody's noticed that you can do the prime instead of dy by dx. What, what that means is if you know what the variables can be, and in this case we're differentiating y with respect to x, you can just put the prime in. But if you wanted dy by dt and, and dx by dt, you'd have to put d by dt of y and d by dt of x. OK, so I'm just going to differentiate this. So remember what we do is we multiply by the power. So instead of 4, we get 4 times 3, so that's going to be 12. And then we reduce the power by 1, so that becomes 12x squared. And then the next term, we multiply by the power, so that's going to be minus 4. And then we reduce the power by 1, so that becomes x. Then we multiply 3 by the power, and the power is 1, so we get 3. And then 5 is like 5 times x to the 0. Multiply anything by 0, and you get 0. So that term disappears. So we've got our original equation here, we differentiate it to get here, and now what I'm saying is that integration is the inverse operation of differentiation. So let's just write the rules down for differentiation. So differentiation, uh, uh, differentiation, you multiply by the power, by power and then 2 two is reduce the power by 1. OK, so that's differentiation. So integration, I'm saying, is the, is the opposite of that. So let's have a different colour. So integration So 1 is we're going to increase the power obviously by 1 and then 2 is going to be divide by new power. OK, so let's just drag this down and do the do that. So we've got y is equal to that. So I'm going to say i, our integral, is equal to. So we increase the power. So we've got a 2 there. So we increase that to 3. So we're going to get 12x cubed. And then we divide by the new power. So 12x cubed over 3. The next term is going to be minus 4x. We increase the power. So that becomes x squared. We divide by the new power. On this one, we've got like something like x to the 0, so it's going to be 3x, and then we divide by the new power, so that's going to be divide that by 1. OK, simplify that a little bit. 12 divided by 3 is 4x cubed. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2x squared, and obviously 3 divided by 1 is just going to be 3x. OK, so let's just go over that again we've got the equation we've differentiated to get we've differentiated 4x cubed to get 12x squared and all the other terms then we've integrated so we increased the power there the 2 became 3 and then we divide by the new power the x to the 1 became x squared and when we divide by the, the the 2 of the square 3 to the 3x to the 0 x becomes 1 so we get 3x and then we divide by that so we've got basically where we started from. So 4x to the 3, 4x to the 3, 2x squared, 2x squared, plus 3x squared, plus 3x squared. But we've lost our final term, and that shouldn't have been a 5x. Let me remove that x. That was just 5, wasn't it? Yeah, because it was 5x to the 0, that is what we had. And we've lost it, because there's nothing here that says there's, a, there's something at the end. So because we don't know what it is, we just add, if we've got a working pen, we add a constant of integration. OK, so 
at the moment we're doing what's called indefinite integration because we're not putting any limits on this but we're saying that we're just going to add a constant here which is called the constant of integration okay so just briefly again you get your original expression you increase the power by one you divide by the new power and you do that to all the terms in the polynomial and then at the end you add a constant of integration because you don't know whether there was one there before or not okay so um, so we can do that with polynomial expressions and for a sanity check every time you do an integration my strong recommendation is that you do a differentiation so I've got my version of i here so for sanity sanity what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate this so I'm going to get um, the i because I'm calling that i di by dx is equal to um, 3 times 4 is 12x and we reduce the power by 1 squared 2 times 2 is so that's going to be minus 4x and this is going to give us plus 3 um, 12x squared 12x squared minus 4x minus 4x plus 3 plus 3 so my sanity check works out um, on this rather simple example okay are there any questions on that before I keep moving right what I'm going to do then you pause these just briefly okay I'm just going to drag this table in this is um this is baseline um, and this is uh, the chapter on integration so it, we, I'm down here so part way down that chapter um, we've got this table of standard integrals and again you're going to get this on the exam paper so don't feel that you have to learn it by heart but here's our x and we raise the power by one and divide by the new power and we add a constant of integration um, this looks slightly complicated I'll come back to that in a second um, we've got the integral if you integrate sine you get minus cos and then if you think about that last week we were saying if you differentiate cos you get minus sine so obviously if you differentiate minus cos you're going to get plus sine and if you integrate cos you get sine if you integrate tan you get log sec ax bad news keep away from that if you can um, integral of e to the ax is e to the ax divided by a and if you think about that if you were to differentiate e to the a, e to the ax over a plus a constant um, you'd get a e to the ax over a so the a's would cancel and then the constant would also disappear and then you've got the integral of log x which uh, or log ax which I'll worry about that a bit later on okay so that's a table of standard integrals that you you will get you'll get a slightly different one on the um, exam sheet and just whilst we're here resources past papers formula sheet there we go and there is the formula sheet that's what you're going to get on the exam so standard differentials there okay standard integrals there so those those are this is this is the precise thing that you'll get on the uh, on the exam okay uh, we've got confidence factors yes we do and normal distribution and so on but that just let me show you again lecture no not lectures past papers formula sheet it's there on baseline so you can get it anytime you want okay and whilst I'm here I'll just observe that I didn't put up the differential videos I've actually prepared them but I've not put them up I will put them up this afternoon so you've got those as a as a learning resource right so let's throw that off and go back to integration um, standard integrals right okay so let's let's now do some more examples um, if we've got um, if we want to integrate um, cos 2x so let's go back to my back pen so y equals cos 2x okay if I want to integrate y with respect to x so let me just tell you that again I'm going to integrate y with respect to x that's how you would term what we're saying here and just so you know this integral sign is it's like a distorted s that's what it's meant to be because it's actually the sum of 
Um, so just like we used sigma before to mean the sum of a set of numbers in statistics, this is also the sum of, um, and as I say, it's just a sort of distorted S. Um, it doesn't always look like that, but, but that's what it's meant to mean. So um, we've got the, how do you type it? Um, if you wanted to put this into baseline, Robin, what I do is I type this. So I put, let's take that second bracket, I'd say int cos brackets 2x. In fact, there are no, there are no examples that require you to do that, but I, I type the word int because there's no symbol in, in, you know, on the keyboard that will do that. And unless you use a language like LaTeX, um, you, you, you type the word int. So in my examples, when I give them to you, they'll, they'll have int typed into it on the examples that I publish. OK, so let's get rid of that. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to integrate cos. So we're going to get, and let me scroll back to here, table of common integrals. I'll just drag that in. We're going to integrate cos. So we're going to get sine ax over a. So let me take that out again. We're integrating cos. So that's going to give us sine 2x divided by 2 plus a constant. OK, and that's how simple it is. And as I say, for a sanity check, sanity, what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate that. So we're going to differentiate sine. So we'll get cosine cos 2x. And then using the chain rule, we've got to differentiate this thing, which is going to give us a 2. And that's over 2, if you remember. And then the constant, when you differentiate, will disappear. Obviously, the 2s will cancel. So we'll end up with cos 2x, which says that, uh, you know, our sanity check says that we, we did that correctly. OK. Um, and there's another example. Let's let's do another one. Let's do the integral y is equal to e to the, I don't know, 5x, shall we say. So the integral of y with respect to x is equal to, and again, if I wanted to write it out, I'd say e to the 5x dx. And that would equal e to the 5x divided by 5 plus a constant. And then for sanity, and you know I've been doing maths for quite a few years now, I never ever do an integration without doing a differentiation. I always differentiate because it's easy to drop things. So for a sanity check, I'm going to differentiate this and I'm going to get um, 5e to the, no, let me do it there. So sanity, so I'm going to get e to the 5x, that's meant to be a 5, oh, making it worse. So e to the 5x, and then we, by the chain rule, we differentiate that, so I'm going to get 5, that's also divided by 5, and then the constant will disappear. That 5 will cancel with that 5, so that is equal to e to the 5x, which, as I said before, is the same as that one there. So, um, so the sanity check checks out for us. Right, now, let's do something a little bit more tricky. Imagine we've got something like y is equal to 3x plus 4 to the power of 5, let's say. And we want the integral of y dx, which, just so you know, I'm going to tend to call that capital I, which is just the, the integration that we're doing. So rather than write this out every time, I do tend to write capital I. So if you see me writing capital I, um, you'll know what it is. So what we can do here is we can do a substitution. So we can say let 3x plus 4 equal u. And this is substitution. OK, 3x plus 4 is equal to u. So um, 
if we differentiate both sides with respect to x, we're going to get um, 3, because obviously 3 times x will differentiate to 3, and 4 will disappear, and that is equal to du dx. Now, it's not quite right to say I'm going to multiply both sides by dx, but it's going to look a bit like that. So we're going to say 3x... No, I'm not. We're going to say 3dx is equal to du. So I can say dx is equal to du over 3. OK, so now what I can say is that the integral of y dx is equal to, that was 3x plus 4 to the power of 5, so that's going to be u to the power of 5 times dx, which is du over 3. And I'm going to integrate that. OK, so that is going to equal, remember the rules, you increase the power and then divide by the new power. So we're going to get u to the power of 6 over 6 times 3 plus a constant. OK, and now what we need to do is to back substitute. So that's going to equal u was here, 3x plus 4. So that's 3x plus 4 divided by 18 plus a constant. OK, <coughs> not quite to the power of 6. So it's 3x plus 4 to the power of 6 divided by 18 plus the constant. OK, so as a sanity check, so sanity, I'm going to differentiate this. So that is going to give me, um, I'm going to get 6 brackets 3x plus 4 and that's going to be the power of 5. That's over 18. And then I need to multiply by the... I need to differentiate by the, the this bracket here, don't I? Sorry, by the chain rule, I need to differentiate the bracket. So that's going to be times 3, which is the differential of the contents of the bracket. OK, so I've got 6 and 3, and I've got 18 there. So that is going to equal 3x plus 4 to the power of 5. OK, what did we start with? 3x plus 4 to the power of 5. So let me just quickly go over that again. So this is this is a linear function of x, but obviously I'm raised to the fifth power here, so the whole thing isn't a linear function of x. And if I wanted to, I could just expand this bracket, so I'd get um, 3 to the 5 is, what, 81, 383 times 9, I don't know, it's a, it's a number up in the thousands, times x to the 5, plus x to the 4, plus x to the 3, plus x to the 2, plus x to the 1, and so on. And then I could do that bit by bit. Or I can put a substitution to say the linear factor here is equal to u, and then from that I get what dx is equal to, which is here, dx is equal to du over 3. I then differentiate, sorry, I then integrate um, u to the 5 du over 3. So that's u to the 6 times 6, u to the 6 over 6 times 3 plus the constant. And then for a sanity check, I've differentiated this expression. So that gives me 6 times the bracket raised to the fifth. And then I multiply by the differential of the bracket because of the chain rule, which is where the 3 comes from. 6 times 3 is 18, so it cancels without 18, and I get back to where I started from, so I'm confident that I've got the answer right. Okay, Th that sounds quite difficult, um, I know, so really what we'll do is we'll, we'll do some examples on that. Um, right, yes, one more substitution I'd like to do. Imagine we've got... Um, y is equal to the integral of 4 over 2x minus 3 dx. OK, that's a tricky thing to get with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say the problem is here in the denominator. So what I'm going to say is let u equal 2x minus 3. 
Okay, so du dx is equal to 2. So dx is equal to du over 2. Okay, and so my integral now becomes 4 over u times du over 2. Not times. So the integral is 4 over u du over 2, because that's that was dx. Okay, so let just let's just see where the bits are there. So we've got 4 here, and that's the 4 there. We've got 2x minus 3, which is our substitution, so that's u there. And then instead of dx, we've got du over 2, which is there. And that's the bit we've got here. Okay, so that is equal to 4 divided by 2 is 2. Uh, 1 over u du is going to give me the log of u. Um, and then obviously I'm going to have a constant, so I'll back substitute for u, so that's going to be 2 log of 2x minus 3 plus a constant. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I see the question. I'll, uh, I'll do it again. Right, so the example was integrate um, 4 over 2x minus 3 dx. So I'm going to say let u equal 2x minus 3. Okay, so I'm now going to differentiate both sides by x. So I'm going to get du by dx is equal to 2. Okay, and it's dx that I want. So I'm going to move dx up there and the 2 down there. So I can say dx is equal to du over 2. All right, so now what I can do is I can substitute that into this expression. So i is now equal to the integral of 4 over u, there's u, and then instead of dx, I'm going to put du over 2. Okay, so that's going to equal, the 2 can cancel, so I'm going to get, and I can take a 2 outside a bracket because that's not going to change, so it's 1 over u du, and that's one of the standard integrals, so that is equal to 2 times the natural log of u. Okay, and obviously plus a constant, you always have the constant. And you never bother saying C1, C2, C3, because it's just a constant. You don't know what it is, so you, you, you don't have to say, and the constant changes when you do the back substitution. Don't worry about that, because it, it's just a constant. Uh, and it's an unknown constant, that's the point. So then the final thing we have to do is to say that that is equal to 2 log 2x minus 3 plus a constant. Okay, and that's an integration by substitution.